January 1st, 2018, my life changed. A couple's altercation the night before dramatically brought my four-year marriage to an end. And so I woke up in the new year, a 28-year-old single mother to a toddler, carrying a six-figure debt. Broke and broken is what my friends and I call this period of my life. It put me on a journey where I quite literally walked through fire. In the process, I became debt free. I learned habits and principles that put me on a trajectory to building wealth. I achieved tremendous personal growth. But more importantly, it changed my perception of what my individual contribution to the economic narrative of Africa can be. You see, Africa is in trouble. Economic woes, terrible health care, lack of access to education, corruption, bad governance, the list goes on and on. And the most that you, most of us would do is just sit back and complain. But what if I put it to you that the simple action of you taking control of your finances and starting to build wealth would actually positively contribute to how Africa is run. I'll explain this in a bit, but first let me share a few statistics. The global average work life of a person is 30 years. The Eurostat survey of 2020 puts the average work life of a European at 35.9 years. In Africa, the data is a little bit sketchy but it is estimated that Africans spend about 40 years of their lives working. This is because Africans start much earlier in their lives to, pos to actively contribute to the economy of the household and work much later into their retirement to continue supporting their families. So I'm here to say, despite the negative connotations that this data gives for Africa, there's a silver lining. It tells us that Africans actually work hard, and it tells us that Africans know how to earn money. So if we could give them tools and knowledge to actively build wealth early on in their lives, they could actually positively contribute to the African narrative. Which brings in the idea of FIRE. FIRE stands for Financial Independence, Retire Early. It is a personal finance model that gained popularity around the 2010s, and obviously with the growth of the internet and online communities, it has gained a lot of traction among millennials and Generation Z, and Generation Z -gers. It is basically a model standing on two things. First is to aggressively save and invest, and then the second is ruthlessly cutting out expenses. Right here in Zambia, a fire was lit. At the beginning of the global pandemic, I launched a platform called Poised Investor. This is where young people, millennials, and Generation Zegas right here in Africa can go to find personal finance advice and knowledge on how they can start taking control of their personal finances and build wealth. So it's two ideas that have been put together. The first is financial independence, and the second is early retirement. So let's start with financial independence. To be so financially secure that you're able to withstand economic shocks. The access to spaces and privileges that a less financially stable person might not have. My favorite is the freedom to decide when, where, how, and with whom you would like to work. Early retirement is basically to be so economically sound that you're able to stop actively working for an income. This is where your investments or your savings are enough to sustain your everyday economic needs. Now, it is understood that FIRE is not one size fits all. And over the past decade, different factions of the idea have grown. So I'm going to share four types of FIRE that you can target for. The first is traditional FIRE. This is basically where you're aiming to save and invest enough that you can sustain your current lifestyle. 
Remember, with all these types, aggressively saving and aggressively investing is a goal. The next would be fat fire. This is the type of fire that most of us think about when you think about retirement. You want to live a luxurious life, get on a boat or buy a yacht somewhere and travel the world. You could think of it as fire on steroids. This is usually targeted for by um, high income earners or if you're not a high income earner but you want fat fire, then you would need to find alternative sources of income. The next would be lean fire. As you might have guessed, it's the opposite of fat fire. You're aiming to live a minimalist lifestyle in retirement. So in Africa, usually this is where people who are working in the city say, I'm retiring, I'm moving back to the village to live a simple life. And the last one is barista fire. This one targeted for mostly by young people. They want to retire in their 30s and 40s, but then are aiming to work minimal hours or minimal jobs to continue to supplement their income in retirement. Okay, well, FIRE has received some criticism, obviously. People have mentioned how usually when you start saving, something comes up, an aunt gets sick, a tire bursts, and so on and so forth. If you talk to any financial advisor worth their salt, they will tell you that the first step to financial independence would be for you to start building your emergency fund. This is a fund that would cushion you when things like an aunt getting sick or a tire bursting um, events, right? And also, FIRE is not something which is like a get-quick-rich scheme. It, it will take dedication, it will take discipline, and it will take some sacrifices. So over time, you will have to say some hard no's. The second criticism that FIRE has received is that it is for high-income earners only. Critics have mentioned how it is hard for low-income earners to actually have enough to save up. But remember, FIRE is not a concept for two years or three years. It is a long-term game. We are talking about saving and investing for periods of 15 and 20 years. So even if you're saving small amounts every month or every week, over a period of 10 years, 20 years, you would have built up enough of a fund to create wealth for yourself. So three things I want to mention. One, yes, you are building over time. That habit is going to grow for you. So you will learn the discipline to consistently save small amounts. The second thing is, it's a time game, okay? So you're saving and investing over 20 years, 30 years, means that even your small amounts grow to a nice lump sum principle. And the third is compounding effect. When you put away your money or you invest it, it starts to earn interest and the interest starts to earn interest. And over time, that money starts working hard to build your wealth for you. The third and final criticism that FIRE usually gets is that early retirees are not saving and investing enough and when they retire later on in their lives, they will not withstand economic shocks. For the purposes of FIRE in Africa, we are saying early retirement is not about you stopping to work completely. We are saying earn enough, save enough, build wealth for you to stop actively working to survive, but then pivot and start working in areas that are impact or purpose driven. That way you will continue con to contribute positively to your community. But also, because you're still earning an income, you still have money coming in. The second thing is your investments, the income that you're getting from your investments will be enough to sustain you even in retirement. The goal is not for you to actively live off your principal, but for you to live off the returns that come in after you have invested. Okay, so now we, own, we know about FIRE. I want you to take a moment and think about what you would be doing if you had all the money in the world and you had all the time in the world. Money was no longer a factor of you, for you to work. What would you spend your time doing? Okay, great. Was that enough time for you to dream? 
Okay, I want to leave you with four things. A few steps that you can take for you to actually start your on fire journey. The first is to figure out your fire number. How you do this is simple. You find out one month's expenses, how much you spend, okay, every month, multiply that by 12, and then multiply that by 25. So crudely, you would have established what your goal is, how much money you need to save and invest for you to be able to live for 25 years without ever having to work again. Simple, right? The next thing you can do is to track your finances. Find out where does your money come from. And when I say track your finances, I'm not just talking about your salary. Track, if you're a young person, those gifts that you get from your uncles, extra jobs that you take, track every income that you have into your household. And then find out where does your money go? Are you spending too much on clothes? Are you traveling too much? Are the grocery budgets too large in your household? So find out where your money goes. The third thing you would do is dream around ways that you can increase your income but also look at those expenses that are not very important to you that you can cut out of your budget. And the last thing is to save. Save something. Even right now in your seats, I can see a few people with devices. Push some money from your mobile wallet into your bank account right now. In this way, you would have started on your own fire journey. And even if your goal was not retirement, you would still be just the simple act of you constantly saving and investing back into our economy would mean that you're contributing positively to the African narrative. Thank you. <laughs>